So as you may be aware, my animator 2 has added the feature for inverse kinematics, aka IK. Hmm, that was kind of weird sounding. Anyway, so we're just gonna quickly cover today, oh quickly, that's kind of a word for someone who rambles, uh, how to set that up on a character. So of course, first thing we need is the character. So let's go ahead and now the character part, we're gonna create a human, a Steve. I'm just gonna plop him in there. Whoa, that's I'm zooming. My mouse wheel is kind of messed up. So if it seems like I'm zooming around in weird ways, it's not me. So if you click on one of the limbs here, let's say the arm, you'll see that under the constraints tab, there, that's kind of what you'll see when you first start up. Uh, the constraints, you have follow path, which we covered in the last tutorial I made. And then you have invert kinematics. And basically what that means is you can make an object, a limb point to another object. So it can make, Certain things work certain ways, so we'll go into that. But first we need a target. As you can see, we can make a target any object we have in our scene. So what I'm gonna do just to make this kind of visually stand out is create a sphere. So we're here in the shape options, whatever. Just gonna plop this sphere just about anywhere. Now you don't have to do this, but one thing I'm gonna do to kind of keep my scene organized is just parent the sphere to Steve just because, you know, like maybe I want to animate IK and everywhere the Steve character goes, not to a particular point in my scene. So that's just kind of how I'm going to go about it. And what I also want to do is give this a custom rotation and make it zero, just so that it's zeroed on the origin point there. And with the scale linked, I'm going to just drag this down so it's kind of smear, maybe one point. 0.15 I mean and we're gonna drag this out so we can see it actually like this like so okay it's a little bit behind them one thing you don't want to do is actually parent this to the limb or whatever you're trying to use IK on so that's why I just have it parented to the root object of Steve and not like to his arm or anything so to make this a little bit more visually uh, identifiable I'm gonna go into all right, what is that? Did I just click on something there? I missed it. Anyway, I'm gonna change my bling color. I'm just gonna make it red or something so that we can uh, see this a little bit easier. So with that created, I'm also gonna name it. I'm just gonna call it IK Tar Left, because this is left arm. And I mean, you could make left arm as well, just in case you were gonna do multiple limbs like the legs. Okay, so with that set, we're just gonna go ahead and click on the arm. We're gonna set our target to IK tar left arm. Very simple. So there you go. And as you can see, the arm is kind of went wonky immediately. And it kind of acts a little wonky in certain cases. That looks okay. But if I do with this, the arm kind of, you know, rotates on its own and there's no way that we can really control that. I can bring this up and it makes his arm bend. And, you know, I can do all this, but uh, it, is sort of kind of just acting on its own. We can't really control as much how the arm moves as we want to. So what we're gonna add here is an angle target. So what I'm gonna do is just duplicate this one right here. Do like that and we're gonna rename this one IK Angtor Left Arm. So what I'm gonna do with this one is actually move it to the back of the arm here. Well, that was a little bit too far, I would say, and this like that. And uh, since this is just an angle target, just to distinguish it a little bit more, I'm gonna make it even smaller. We're gonna make that about 0 0.075. And now we click on the arm again, and we're gonna go to our constraints, inverse kinematics, and you'll see here we have angle target. Set it to that one. And what this does is, let's say we have the arm and we want it here, but for whatever reason, when we want the elbow facing another way, we can move this and that controls how the elbow is angled. And that gives us more control over what kind of poses we can get using IK here. So basically what this does is uh, allows you to have the arm in a fixed position. And if I take the body here and I do this, you will notice that Steve is working very hard to keep his hand attached to the target there and you know it's kind of just stretching towards it when i get out of range of it you can't touch it okay 
And uh, yeah, so that's basically IK. And that would be, you know, something you can do. You can add this to the feet, to the legs, and kind of move his body up and down and make him look like he's dancing or something. Pretty easy stuff. And that's how you use IK. Now, for those of you who didn't click off the video immediately, I'm going to show you one final tip about using IK like this. All right? So, problem that you might notice, that you might be thinking about, if you weren't in a rush and just left the video to run and play with Minimator 2, you're going to have these in your scene when you render it out. And you don't want to be seeing your your IK targets and whatnot. You're going to want those to not be in your render, in your final animation. So what we can do is when we click on these and we go down here to appearance, you have HQ hiding. Now you have LQ hiding and what you'll notice when I click that, it disappears because we're in low quality view. If I go to rendered mode, you will see that it is now there again. So turn that off because we want to be able to see it while we're animating. If I turn on HQ hiding, you'll see that that is still there. But when I go to rendered mode, it is no longer there. It's like magic. So if I do that for both of these, and I uh, will probably maybe set that before you duplicate your IK targets, and that way you don't have to do it for each of them. But now I can animate using IK, and we don't have those pesky little targets in our scene. Another thing to note is that not everything allows you to do IK. For instance, we have these spheres here. If we go to constraints, then we only have the follow path constraint. So this is typically, I think, only for character models. Um, let's see if we can do it for all of them. I don't know if this is limited to just human models or, yep. So as you can see here on the squid, even though we're selecting the limbs here we only have the follow path constraint option so that's no good so it might only be for human type models let's see about the zombies okay the zombie has it but that is basically a human model let's see if we got it for skeletons skeleton look like he's pretty good to go with the uh, inverse kinematics uh, we'll do one more maybe a couple more we'll do a creeper Click on his legs. Looks like he has inverse kinematics enabled for his leggy doos. How about a spider? Spiders are pretty good. And no, spiders do not have inverse kinematics. So this is kind of a limited feature currently, but you know, for most of your kind of humanoid shaped characters, character models, you do have the inverse kinematics feature. So there you have it. Hope that was helpful. Hope you learned something. And uh, yeah, go off and use inverse kinematics if you dare.